The housing market in the Tri-County, South Florida area has soared to become one of the most overvalued markets in the United States due to very high demand and a persistent supply shortage. According to researchers from FAU and FIU, buyers are now paying a 39% premium for the typical home in South Florida, making it the 11th most overvalued market in the US. Florida as a whole is experiencing a similar trend with nine of its metro areas ranked in the top 15 most overvalued markets in the country. Tampa leads the pack with buyers paying a staggering 42.56% premium for houses, followed by Northport, Cape Coral, Lakeland, Palm Bay, Jacksonville, Orlando, and Deltona. In this video, we're gonna discuss the top 15 most overvalued markets in the US, how we got to this point, and what these same researchers say is gonna to happen to the market. So make sure you stay tuned into the end. After watching this whole video, I'd love it if you could leave a comment with your opinion on where the market's going and be specific as to why using data. If this is your first time to the channel, this is where we go over everything South Florida housing market related. So if that interests you, be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channels and follow us on social media. And if you need help buying or selling in South Florida, don't hesitate to reach out to us. So first, I wanna explain how these researchers define overvalued and where they predict the market is going to go. These researchers use data from Zillow to find the average annual rate of appreciation in each city going back to 1996. Any increase in prices above the historically average pace of appreciation, they're deeming as overvalued. With the rapid increase in prices since 2020, it's no wonder the market is considered overvalued across the country, but both of these researchers in this study agree that the chance of a significant crash in prices is unlikely. They say that unfortunately, this housing market cycle will become known for its prolonged period of unaffordability. So let's get into it. As of the end of June, the median home price in South Florida reached 458749 Real estate economist Ken Johnson of Florida Atlantic University suggests that the price surge may be linked to seasonal factors, but the steady premium scores, meaning the difference between the actual and the statistically predicted prices, imply a more significant underlying trend. If home prices had appreciated at the historically average pace over the last few years, the median home price in South Florida would currently be 330,285. The top five overvalued metros in the country as of June, 2023 are number one, Atlanta at 47.34%, Number two is Detroit at 46.08%. Number three is Tampa at 42.56%. Number four is Northport, Florida at 41.93%. Number five is Memphis at 41.85%. Number six is Winston, North Carolina at 41.77% overvalued. Number seven is Cape Coral, Florida at 41.66%. Number eight is Charlotte, North Carolina at 41.48% overvalued. Number nine is Lakeland, Florida at 40.26% overvalued. 10 is Palm Bay, Florida at 39.89% overvalued. 11 is Miami, which is including all of Southeast Florida, Broward, Miami, Dade, and Palm Beach County at 38.89% overvalued. 12 is Jacksonville at 38.73%. 13 is Orlando at 31.18% overvalued. 14 is Greensboro, North Carolina at 38.06% overvalued. And 15 is Deltona, Florida at 38% overvalued. So how did we get here? Well, historically, housing prices do appreciate. So it's not a new phenomenon that homes are going up in value. But in March, 2020, to fight the economic effects of the pandemic, the Federal Reserve slashed interest rates to zero to boost the economy. The unintended consequence was that homeowners refinanced their homes, locking in sub 3% rates. Today, 45% of homes in America have no mortgage at all and 62% of homes have an interest rate below 4%. This is wildly different than before the 2008 crash when many people had adjustable rate mortgages with soaring payments and values declining. In that situation, it made more sense for homeowners to stop paying their mortgage or walk away and give their home back to the bank in foreclosure. All the people who own their homes outright or with extremely affordable interest rates will likely be able to keep making payments through any potential economic downturn that may come in the future. Even if prices do come down, these homeowners will not be underwater, so the incentive to stop making payments on these homes just isn't there the way that it was in 2008. Many of these homeowners now feel trapped in their homes 
not wanting to trade up to a more expensive home or a home that better fits their lifestyle because of the much higher interest rate. In order to afford many houses in South Florida, you now need to be making $150,000 or more a year. And many of the people relocating to the state are small business owners and entrepreneurs that meet this category. Unfortunately, this makes it incredibly expensive for the average person to afford to live here. On top of that, many large investment firms are buying up hundreds and thousands of homes at a time. They typically are buying what would be considered a starter home, making it even more unaffordable for people to get on the first ring of the home ownership ladder and build equity. We also had years of underbuilding of homes before the pandemic. And with the natural population growth, we need more homes in this country than ever before. Builders just can't keep up with the frenzied appetite of buyers these days. And in South Florida, our problem becomes even worse because we don't have a lot of buildable lands. We have the Everglades to the west, the ocean to the east, and there just isn't enough land to build on, making land prices go up drastically to the point where it only makes sense to build luxury homes. Again, despite considerable growth in home prices, both of the researchers in this study agree that a significant housing market crash is unlikely and that this cycle will just be characterized by a prolonged period of unaffordable housing. So what do we do about this? When interest rates come back down in a few years, and they will, but it might take till about 2025, you will start to see many sellers feel more comfortable listing their homes for sale, which should help add some supply to the market. But there are a ton of buyers just waiting for rates to drop slightly to re-enter the market. So it's gonna increase demand as well, and that's not a real solution. In my opinion, I'm not a huge advocate of the government telling people or companies what to do, but if there were different incentives for the investment firms, it might discourage them from buying so many houses and give the average Joe a fighting chance. I personally like to see a reduction in the ability of corporations that own 50 or more houses to depreciate the houses on their tax returns. This is a major tax benefit of owning an investment property, and it might change the calculus on their decision to keep buying or even hold the homes. I think if this happens, we may see more corporations sell and give real families a chance to own a home. What do you think? Leave a comment below.